what's going on youtube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel i'm watching and i notice a lot of you are not subscribed but you are watching so i appreciate the views but make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you turn on those post notifications so you can be notified every single time i drop a video and you don't miss not one video everybody in here tuning in make sure you smash that like button it helps my channel grow and drop some comments down below if you have any questions for me any comments any suggestions anything that you liked about the video anything that you disliked about the video i want to hear it all i want to hear it from every single last one of y'all y'all know i respond to everybody even the negative comments you see that we hop right into the video today and judging by the title and the thumbnail you know we got a good one so that's why you clicked on the video i told y'all i'm going to be uploading videos more often i'm going to be dropping these back to back so i can get that new content out for y'all i'm super excited i cannot wait i'm very hyped about it and i know every single last one of y'all are going to enjoy it so let's get straight into the video So today I'm going to be working on Faith. She is a miniature schnauzer and she is going to be getting a schnauzer pattern. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set a proper schnauzer pattern on your schnauzer if you're learning how to groom schnauzers and want to learn how to do a brie cut or if you have a schnauzer at home and you want to learn how to do their haircut at home today is going to be a really good video for you guys because i'm going to go over it step by step i'm going to tell you every single blade that i'm using where i'm thin and sharing so you can blend the lines i'm going to tell you how long to keep the furnishings so the fur that's left on her bellies and her legs and i'm going to be going over everything in detail but first we're starting off with her bath she is getting an apricot scrub on her body because she does have allergies i don't know if you'll be able to notice when she gets back on the table actually you will be able to notice she has burgundy paws so she's been licking and biting so she has allergies and she has some knots on the inside of her sanitary so that leads me to believe that she itches a lot when she's at home so instead of doing an oatmeal bath which is just going to aggravate the allergies and aggravate the yeast buildup on her i did an apricot hot scrub on her and that seemed to help her a lot and I did a milk bath conditioner as well after I did the apricot because the apricot dries out the skin and an apricot bath is good for a dog that has yeast because you want to dry out that yeast you don't want to dry out their skin too much though where they have dry skin afterwards after the bath so you want to do an apricot scrub to dry out that yeast but then you want to go right behind it with a conditioner and that's going to help re-moisturize the skin so for dogs that have an allergy to yeast or an allergy to chicken and they have heavy yeast buildup on their body you want to focus on removing all grain all corn all wheat soy all of that you want to move remove all of that out of their diet you also want to look into the treats that you're giving them because a lot of dog treats have dried brewers yeast in it and that can just feed the allergies as well a lot of us don't think about that when we're feeding treats off the shelf because we don't really look at the ingredient because we think it's what it says on the bag but there is a lot of yeast in different type of treats and also supplements that people use so i would look into more of an organic supplement or some supplements online by coco and luna those are really good they don't have a lot of yeast in there none that i saw because i actually give those supplements to my dogs so coco and luna is a really good brand to buy from i do believe that that is a company that was tailored off of their actual dogs so they try and build things that help to better their dogs as opposed to build things that are going to better their dogs but still keep the issues lingering around so i like them you can find them on amazon let me know if you want me to link it in the the description box because i can and if you haven't checked out the description box i do have a lot of my products in there that i use i know a lot of y'all were asking about it but they are linked in the description box of where i got them from that i shopped around and i found the best price for them when you're doing a conditioner for your dog i think i've stated this before if you want the best results it is best to leave the conditioner on your dog for i would say roughly about 10 minutes 
also i've noticed the longer you leave the conditioner in on your dog the easier it is to wash out usually for corporate business like this we usually have a lot of dogs so we don't have time to leave the conditioner on the dogs but it is optimal if you leave the conditioner on the dogs for at at least five minutes a lot of the bottles will say leave it on there for at least five minutes if you want the best results and i definitely agree with that it's kind of like our hair the longer we leave the conditioner and the softer the coat's going to be the longer it's going to last if your dog has really bad allergies and their skin's really raw from heavy yeast buildup and a lot of issues the best conditioner that i've come across is eucamed by quadruped they have a leave-in medical conditioner and it is phenomenal it's also quick dry so it helps the dog's coat dry faster and that way you're not spending that much time on the dryer but you should also towel dry your dog really well and that'll help with the drying time as well also when you're rinsing the conditioner out the dog it's best to get all the conditioner out if you leave product in the dog that is not meant to be a leave conditioner it can make them really itchy it can aggravate their skin and it can entice allergies so you want to make sure you're rinsing the conditioner out if it's not a leave-in conditioner and how you know the dog is completely rinsed out is if it has that squeaky rubbery clean feel to it that's how you know your dog is completely rinsed also that's how you know your dog is really clean <laughs> And for those of you that are wondering, terriers don't usually take a while to dry. They are usually pretty easy to dry. They dry pretty quickly. As you can tell, her fur is drying up really well and really quickly. I also towel dry them really good so they don't have any dripping fur. You can tell the table is not wet. So if you're towel drying them really well, that's how you can get their fur and their skin to dry faster. If you're towel drying them really good. So for everybody that's wondering why I don't keep the audio in, I cannot keep all of the audio in for my videos because this is a corporate setting. I do work with other people. So if they're talking about something or if they're having a personal conversation amongst the salon, we also have music playing in the background throughout the store. All of that I can get copyrighted for or if they do not allow me to post the audio and they're talking about something personal i can also get sued for it so a lot of the audio i have to cut out because of copyright claims and because of issues with other personal things going on with other people so some of the audio i can keep in like with the bath and the drying but when it gets out to the grooming table a lot of that audio i might have to cut out which is why i do a lot of the background music i know some people don't like the background music but i figured you probably prefer it as opposed to just sitting and watching a quiet groom <laughs> considering i'm not talking the whole video so that is why i don't keep in all of the audio and i put the background music in for y'all I also try and keep like a softer background music. I don't try and put anything that's too crazy or too loud or that is too bass heavy. So I try and put softer music in. So if you have any recommendations of softer music that I can put in that's not copyrighted, I will put it in. I know somebody recommended jazz. I've tried to incorporate some jazz sounds in there as well. So I try and do a little bit of a softer tone of music so it's not as bad but if you have any recommendations or any questions just hit me up in the comments i don't mind responding
as you can see I'm attempting to dry her face and no dog likes their face dried and every dog does the same thing they try and back up off the table and I'm like you cannot do that you're going to fall you're gonna hurt yourself so I got to keep turning her spinning her turning her and spinning her and this is slightly sped up because I didn't think everybody wanted to watch the bath at its slowest speed so I sped the bath up slightly and I slowed the groom down a lot so you'll be able to enjoy the video But now that she is all dry, we are going to start the haircut. I do apologize. This part of her body, I completely forgot to hit the record button. So I cannot show you what I did, but I can explain to you what I did. So the mom likes her in a schnauzer pattern, but she likes a tight schnauzer pattern. So she likes her body to be pretty short, but she likes her furnishings to be a little bit longer. So when you are shaving down a dog's body, when you're setting a schnauzer pattern, you want to skim off where the furnishings are going to be. So for the furnishings under the body, it's supposed to look like an outline to the dog's body. So on the back leg, you want to hold your thumb and your thumb muscle about halfway across that back leg and whatever is not being covered by your hand, that is the part that you are supposed to leave with the furnishings. So you can see I'm kind of skimming off. And then on her undercarriage, you can roll her skin to one side so you can lift it up so you can skim off. As you can see, I'm kind of rolling her skin up as I'm skimming off, but you want to bring it all the way down. So the line for the schnauzer pattern should start right at the elbow as their undercarriage so it should look like an outline and you can kind of see where I'm skimming off and then all of that is supposed to be scissored up nice and tight and then their legs should be a little bit fuller. So right now I'm switching to a four blade and I'm going to run that in reverse on her back and on the sides to give it more of a smoother look. Any blade in reverse is going to be a smooth cut depending on the dog's coat texture. So for a terrier like this or a terrier with a wiry coat or a rough coat if you run a reverse it's going to be smoother it's going to look cleaner it's going to look neater and the pet parent is going to absolutely love it her mom loved the haircut she was so happy because she had mats in her legs and she's used to people just kind of shaving her down her mats were not crazy they weren't extensive they were just from her biting at herself because of her allergies so i just dematted them it took no time because her fur texture demats very easily but it also mats easily so i don't want to penalize the parent for the dog biting at herself because she has allergies and her fur mats easily so i just dematted the little bit of mats that she had like i said she did not have a lot so it made it very easily to take the tangles out
also for a lot of people that are wondering they keep asking me in the comments why do you demat the dog why don't you just shave the dog i don't know why a lot of people think that shaving the dog is what you're supposed to do or if the dog has a slight tangle you have to shave the dog because i've actually worked with people like that in the past and a lot of people were taught that if the dog has a little mat here or a little snag there you automatically have to buzz the dog no you do not have to do that if the mats are not extensive if the mats are not super close to the skin if the dog is not glued to the mat and the mat is safe to brush out you can absolutely brush the mat out little pen mats you can brush out with ease now i say that as and give this disclaimer if your dog has pen mats and it's pen mats all over the body like if you have pen mats just on maybe like the back legs those can be dematted but if you have pen mats on the back leg the body the front legs the ears the muzzle yeah it's probably best to shave your dog but a groomer can work with that and it doesn't have to be shaved down all the way to the skin you just have to be mindful of how you're doing it and what blade you're using to shave down the dog but i am not one that's just going to shave down a dog in a buzz cut just because the dog has a couple snags here and there i know how to properly brush out a mat so i don't mind doing it for the pet parent i don't mind doing it for the dog because some dogs don't like to be shaved naked when you have a dog that is fluffy all the time and then out of nowhere the dog gets super mad and they have to be shaved down it can change the dog's personality because the dog is not used to being without hair so if you have a dog that is fluffy and it's been fluffy his whole life and then you have to get it shaved because it's super matted your dog might act strange your dog might hide under the bed because dogs can kind of feel that too like oh i'm different something's different about me the hair is almost like their security so if you're shaving it completely and they've never been shaved before yes your dog is going to act different but with that being said hair is just hair it's going to grow back it's not gonna not grow back unless you shave a dog that's not supposed to be shaved like a husky or a german shepherd but it is fur it's gonna grow back and it'll be okay <laughs> because some people really get freaked out and some people really don't like their dogs being shaved down which i get completely i definitely completely understand that i understand the stress of not wanting your dog shaved but sometimes you guys you gotta understand if it's best for the dog leave it be but there are some mats that you can brush out where it's fine for the dog as well because there's a lot of people in the comments that say it's best to shave the dog why don't you just shave it no it's not best to shave the dog in most cases in some cases i'll say so you have to take it by case by case and don't just go off of what one groomer says you don't have to go off what i say you can always shop around for different information i think you should take all information and go with it at your speed i tell everybody that i think that's what you're supposed to do take what works for you don't try and be someone else But just to quickly hop back on the haircut topic because I have her at this angle and y'all can see where you see her furnishing line start that is how the schnauzer pattern is supposed to be set so on the outside of the muscle on the leg and right at the undercarriage of the belly line is where the schnauzer pattern is supposed to be set so when you're grooming your dog at home or when you're learning to set a schnauzer pattern at work if you're a new groomer that is where the line is supposed to be set and on their front chest so the front chest there is a little chest bone so at the top of the chest bone is where the top of that furnishing is supposed to start but on the sides where her shoulders are they're supposed to come all the way down and you're supposed to blend all of that in so that is a proper schnauzer cut and i will explain the face when we get to the face and the reason why i wanted to do this video in great detail because a lot of people set the schnauzer pattern and they leave the furnishings with which a lot of people call the skirt they leave it in the middle of the dog's body and that's not where it's supposed to be it's supposed to be down by the undercarriage and if you are confused as to why i'm explaining this in such detail and how i know this information when i first learned how to groom and went to grooming academy the person that trained us on schnauzer patterns 
breeds and shows them and a lot of her schnauzers that she's shown are champions so she instilled in us the proper schnauzer pattern and for the whole month that i've learned how to groom we had a bunch of schnauzers and a bunch of poodles because our academy instructor was someone who bred and showed standard poodles so we learned how to do recuts for poodles and we learned how to do the proper schnauzer pattern so when i see somebody do a schnauzer pattern and it's improper it just makes me cringe a little bit because <laughs> because i was taught so heavily how to do a schnauzer pattern properly so when somebody says oh no you're supposed to leave the skirt up here i'll pull up a picture and say so this is the schnauzer pattern do you want something different than this and they're like oh no give me that so this is how you set a schnauzer pattern for those of you that are wondering the old schnauzer pattern used to have the furnishings a little higher on the hip bone but this was way 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 back in the day and they've changed it so now it has against the front leg off of the muscle line kind of sort of i can't really explain that back leg but for y'all to just see it but that is how you should schna set a schnauzer pattern
Okay, so now we're going to be doing the face. So on the top of the face, I do a seven blade in reverse because all of that is supposed to be in a 10. So the top of the face and on the sides of the cheeks, the ears, all of that is supposed to be a 10. So I do a seven because a seven, two steps down generally is a 10. Sometimes it can be a nine blade because there's a seven, there's an eight and a half, there's a nine blade and there's a 10. But for me and my experience, it usually gets it as close to a 10 as possible. So I'll do a seven blade in reverse on the top of the head and skim off where the eyebrows are. And on the sides of the cheeks, I'll do a 10 blade and on the ears, I'll do a 10 blade. For the ears, you are to trim them to the leather and pluck the ears. This particular schnauzer face, she doesn't have a lot of ear hair, so I just kind of shave out the insides of her ears. And when you are setting the dog's face, so where the eyebrows meet to where the beard meets, it goes from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. It doesn't go from the corner of the eye straight down. A lot of groomers do that. It does not go that way. It's supposed to be diagonal. So it goes from the corner of the eyes to the corner of the mouth. And it's supposed to be a fine line right there. Clean it up really nicely so it blends well. And when you're doing the eyebrows, the eyebrows are to have a little curve in it and the eyebrows are to be long. Some pet parents prefer the eyebrows shorter. I personally like them longer so I usually leave them a little bit longer unless the pet parent says hey can you take them a little shorter and I've never had a pet parent upset about the eyebrows so for the eyebrows leave a little curve in there you can do them with your curved shears or you can do them with your straight shears and kind of just stop scissoring at a certain point and that's how you kind of create that makeshift curve in the eyebrows also for the beard when you are trimming up the beard right down the bridge of the nose you are never to shave or scissor that part some people like it but for breed sanders you are not to shave or scissor in between that nose the owner likes it so other groomers have done it i try and wet it a little bit so it stays down so it looks like it's down but you don't want to shave or scissor in the bridge of their nose because all of that hair is supposed to fall down and they're supposed to have a long beard. A lot of people don't like the beard because it gets messy, but what you can do is you can scissor the beard a little bit round for the owners that don't like it. No, it's not breed standard, but it's to the pet parent's liking. So a nice little round tight beard, some of them can get away with. And as you can see, anytime i try and work on faith's face she just hangs her head look at her she's hanging her head and i'm like faith how can you breathe like that no matter the loop slack no matter how much slack there is in the loop how loose it is she will always hang her head for her face because she does not like her face being done i.e why she was trying to back up off the table for the dryer <laughs> but she doesn't like her face done so if i go to shave her ear scissor her face anything she's going to hang her head so at some point i was just like okay let me just quickly get your face done and you can get off the table and stop trying to choke yourself because <laughs> clearly you don't want your face done so when you are scissoring the ears i am comfortable with eight inch shears because i've been doing this for a very long time i've never cut a dog's ear doing this so you want to scissor them as close to the leather as possible i usually put my finger right at the tip of the leather so when i'm scissoring if i cut anything i'm going to cut myself so i'd rather cut myself than the actual dog so you put your finger as close as you can to the tip of the leather and you scissor and that's how you get it as close as you possibly can and you do that on both sides of the ear new groomers if you are not comfortable using eight inch shears you should be taught to use them with six and a half inch shears because they are short I would recommend that if you are new home groomers, pet parents, if you're learning to groom your dogs at home and you have a schnauzer, use shorter shears. It is a lot safer until you get more comfortable with longer shears.
So because I love straight shears, I use straight shears for everything. I use them to set the eyebrows. I use them to set the corner of the face. Well, for the sides of the face, I'll usually use thinning shears to thin that out and blend that up. And then in the corners of the eyes, I'll just take my straight shears and I'll just kind of clip out what's there. And now I'm going to take my thinning shears and I'm going to blend the sides of the face. So it kind of just looks like it runs all together. And I used my thinning shears to neaten up her legs, but I use my straight shears on her undercarriage and just kind of scissoring the outline of her legs. So everything looked neat and it flowed well. Now in between her eyes to clean up all that loose hair in between her eyebrows I use my thinning shears and I thin downwards and then in the corner of her eyes I use my thinning shears there to just clean up the rest of the hair that's sticking in her eyes. I was taught to use your thinning shears and thin downwards but don't thin it so much where it's bald in between but thin it enough where it's short and it kind of matches the rest of her body. And when you're thinning the sides of her face from the corner of her eyebrows to the corner of her mouth, you want to point your shears in an angle and thin upwards or downwards, whatever is comfortable to you. I do upwards on the left side of her face and then on the right side of her face, I'll thin and shear downward. But I always go through with the comb to make sure I hit every snag, any tangles or anything like that. Now we're going to finish her up with a little spritz of cologne so she smells good when her mom picks her up. And I'm going to clean off the table and get ready for her pictures like I always do. And now we're going to take a look at Faith's haircut and I think she looks absolutely adorable. That is how you set a schnauzer pattern. There are certain areas that you can kind of nitpick but as you can see her beard kind of fluffs out right now but it'll fall to the side once her hair is kind of gotten a little bit of oil back in it and the natural oils go back into her coat make sure you guys smash that like button it helps my channel grow and gets me back out to the algorithm drop a comment down below share this video train your dogs for grooming and i will catch you guys in the next video love you guys